Hello folks, welcome to what I'm going to try to uh, make a kind of a general lab update for you. I've got a couple of things going on here in the workshop, so I'll make this video just to give you a quick overview on what's, uh, what's afoot. And then hopefully in a few days after that we'll have a more detailed video on some of the stuff going on in the next room. Uh, this video also, I'm going to attempt to edit it and upload it from my phone, which is what I'm filming this on now, just to see how that works out, hopefully cut down on some of the, the I guess, time, energy, quotient needed to make videos. So we'll see how that works out. So you'll probably be subjected to uh, even less editing than you are generally used to so I won't even bother apologizing for that because at this stage who really cares so on the bench our famous model 3 rear drive unit inverter once again um, been getting back around to looking at this from the mod board uh, point of view as you know we had a mod board made some months back by pcb way and uh, unfortunately just due to my own errors in the design uh, i kind of knew at the time that it wasn't going to work but it was more to just see how the whole fit of it the physical fit was going to work before i put in any more effort into it so Circled back around to this about a week ago now and kind of started looking at the board and how I was going to work out the whole positioning of the device and that because when your board is basically 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters every millimeter counts. So ended up thinking you know, wouldn't it be great if I could get rid of the resolver op-amp and the resolver filter? Because basically what we do with the STM32 is we start with a square wave, filter that down to a sine wave, and then boost that back up uh, to excite a resolver. So obviously the TI micro that they use here um has got dax on it so when i was ma mapping out the pins i found this pin that had this lovely you know 3.3 volt level 10 kilohertz sine wave on there and i thought oh well you know this is the resolver exciter and so i, I proceeded with the mod bore along that assumption and I guess maybe about a week ago, I discovered <laughs> that the STM32103 family has got a variant called the high density range. Uh, it is the R, C, R, D, and R, E variants. And they have DACs on them. So I thought, hallelujah, we'll just use the DAC uh, from an STM32 to produce our nice sine wave. That way I can get rid of those extra components from the board. And importantly, that lets me position the chip, the STM32, right in the middle of the PCB, which is ideal for me. A fever, sorry, pinching my nose. So that's great. Um, and of course we've no software to run the DAC. So I annoyed Johannes and he course did what he does just went away and a few a few hours later came back with uh, the DAC working I thought brilliant so I was all set to push the button on a batch of mod boards uh, when there's a guy on the forum there that's been helping out on the on the project uh, basically said because what he's been doing is he's been looking at porting the open inverter firmware to the texas instruments ic uh, which would be brilliant because then you just swap the chip there's no need for mod boards 
Well, anyway, uh, he's been looking at pin mapping and things like that, and he discovered that the pin that I had identified as being the resolver signal um, didn't have a DAC function mappable to it. And uh, so he kind of put a message up on the forum and I looked at this and I thought, oh, you know, maybe I've screwed up. Maybe it's a pin either side or maybe I've mistook, a, you know, I guess one of the feedbacks, the sign or the cosine for this. So I went back in, I grabbed the, the front drive unit inverter that still has the musk brain in it. Put that on the bench, looked around and no, it's definitely pin 60. Yeah, it's pin 60. And I was nearly, you know, I was in full arrogance mode and I was very nearly pushing the button again just to uh, order the boards. And I thought, well, while I'm here, why don't I take the rear drive unit inverter that we have removed the chip from, put up a signal generator, inject the signal onto that pad and just check that it all works and we get our feedback. And guess what? It didn't work. And I go away and I start thinking that, you know, okay, is there some enable pin, you know, from one of the GPIOs that I hadn't worked out that has to be high or low or something. Uh, but then Dave on the forum came back and he said, you know, you have that 10 kilohertz square wave on pin 160. You know, could that have something to do with it? And of course, arrogance mode again, I said, well, it's a square wave. And I had assumed, yes, that was something to do with the power supply. But I came out here this morning, fired up the scope and all this, and I injected a 3.3 volts, 10 kilohertz square wave onto pin 160. And guess what? The resolver starts working and I get my sine and my cosine feedbacks. And on the other side of the device on pin 60, Guess what I see? A lovely sine wave. Turns out Elon nearly had me. Uh, he is monitoring the resolver exciter. So it looks as if they have uh, ripped off Johannes's design of converting a square wave into a sine wave and then amplifying it to excite the resolver. So did my little changes on the board, uh, have ordered some boards now. So we have boards on the way that, in theory, we should be able to solder in here and will get us working. I just need to figure out a way to tell Johannes that I don't actually need the DAC now and that the square wave that he already had will be just fine. Um, yeah. Do you have any ideas on how to do that or, you know, leave a comment for me because, yeah. Okay. Um, one other thing, just on the resolver. We normally run at 4.4 kilohertz. Well, Elon don't like 4.4 kilohertz. Uh, you get all kinds of distortions in the uh, waveform. My guess would be it's less than half the design frequency of the filters and whatever else they have in there. So they, um, they're they not happy with it, but they are happy at 8.8 .8 kilohertz. So fingers crossed we'd be able to make that happen. Though, yeah, couldn't really blame Johannes if he didn't take my calls for some time after this. So that's what we got on the bench in terms of the Model 3 drive unit. Um, inverter hacking thingy um over here as well we've also got a latest batch of our model 3 pcs controllers uh, i have to do some final testing on this guy here did have to do a hardware redesign of this it is the same as the uh, one that i launched about two weeks ago uh, but i've simply changed the header uh, to use one of these amp seal 35 headers here because due to the crazy uh, parts shortages the um, Molex ME MX things were just you know not just not able to get them so 35 way amp seal fits on there perfectly and uh, I'm hoping to get a little 3d printable enclosure for this and we'll um, 
put the design of that up on the GitHub uh, when it's available. So that's what I got on the bench for you. Um, PCS, by the way, working great in the Grey Goose. I've been doing some uh, pretty major driving with the Grey Goose recently. Um, I've taken it to a fast charging point where it's got the 63 amp AC available. So I've been able to take it up to the full 10 kilowatts there. So that's uh, working. So now I just, just got to do a uh, final test here on the hardware. And then uh, that will be good to go. Um, so that's it for the bench. Uh, let's go have a look in the workshop area. Alrighty, so guess what you're going to see here is we've got ourselves a, uh, a Nissan Leaf uh, Gen 1 battery pack here. Um, somewhat reconfigured from its original configuration. Um, normally these things come in a big and two kind of small pancake formats. I've reconfigured the cells into just uh, this guy, which is a really big, um, I guess, longitudinal uh, variant and this kind of a shorter uh, variant here. And what we're doing with these is, these are going in the E39. Uh, we will be paralleling them with the BMW hybrid, uh, the nine kilowatt hour BMW hybrid pack. Uh, that we have in there. These came out of my wife's uh, 2011 Gen 1 Leaf uh, that we recently did a 40 kilowatt hour upgrade on. So didn't really bring you guys along for this. It's pretty pedestrian. Um, just taking packs apart, cutting up bits of the metalwork and getting it all to fit together. Um, I'm getting some material for box making in here fairly soon, so I will probably bring you along for a little bit of that if that's what your hearts desire, because as the Germans would say, we will be doing some Edelstahl Schweissen uh, fairly soon, which is a first for me. Um, so that's bound to end badly, and I know that things that end badly get me clicks, and I'm all about clicks. So another thing I'm doing is hopefully getting some 3D printed um, insulators to go on there in between the bus bars. I have to cut up the old uh, bus bars. Let's have a quick look at that. So over here on the bench, I've got all the hardware I pulled off the, um, I pulled off the flatter uh, packs and I've got out some of these, um, are ideally shaped some of them not so i've got these guys marked out so i'm going to be cutting and drilling uh, i won't bring you along for that it's you know not exactly exciting stuff and to be honest when i video stuff anyway it normally you know kind of quite naturally takes more time to get it done so unless you have a real desire to see me drilling six and a half millimeter holes in copper bar I think we'll skip that until we get to the point of uh, making up the old uh, edel style. And here we have, not been seen for a while now, our Jaguar I-Pace uh, front drive unit. Um, I'm going to be circling back to this pretty soon because i got to get this thing out of here. Um, it's a big lump and I need it gone. So I have the inverter re reverse engineered for that. So I've popped the half shafts out now so that I can move it around a bit. So we'll have an episode for you on uh, that guy uh, coming up soon. We'll have a logic board to go in the iPace inverter. Uh, so that'll be again available open source, of course, and on the old web shop where you can purchase it. So I can run away to retire in Lanzarote. And just to wrap things up, a uh, brief little look at something uh, that's just arrived here uh, that we'll be seeing a video on very soon. Uh, we'll be taking this guy apart and doing some uh, work with it. 
uh, for the uninitiated. This is a Mitsubishi Outlander uh, plug-in hybrid uh, gearbox. Uh, so this guy has some very interesting little features uh, that we're going to be availing of. And uh, up there in the, in the, let's say, up right hand corner of the frame now, you might just be able to see some other stuff on the bench. I'm not going to give too much away. We do have rather exciting little, uh, hopefully be a short little mini series for you. Um, that will uh, help folks out and uh, hopefully get a few more people nearer the idea of being able to perform their own conversion because at the end of the day that is what I've been uh, I've been trying to do over the years so that's what we got out here it's uh, a good bit tidier and of course we have our uh, we have our lister LT1 and our Prius uh, Gen 3 inverter and Estima MG1 here. We are in no way finished with that because very, very soon we are going to have the prototype hardware for our new VCU project. And uh, that will be testing out here. This will be our Toyota test bed. Um, and we have our Leaf drivetrain obviously in the grey goose and we have a new drivetrain that is going to be getting some zombie barter treatment you know mentioning no names you know, anything here that you might see in this frame like that way no i better not mention any of, of that and just excite too many people so that's it for our workshop arena update Alrighty folks, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I am going to go off now and see just how much of a mess that I can make out of phone editing a video. Uh, should have mentioned earlier that one of the reasons I've done a try to phone editing is that rather embarrassingly, my phone has more video processing horsepower than my desktop PC. Um, I'll be able to shoot this in maybe even up to 4K if this actually works out so you can get to see my uh, attractive features in the highest definition possible. Um, so I'm going to wrap up, try and keep this one reasonably short. Uh, as I mentioned briefly inside we will have some Zombie Verter VCU prototype hardware coming very soon so you can expect some uh, videos and detail on that also um so that's it don't forget to dislike do not share unsubscribe from this ridiculous channel and whatever you do don't check the links in the description for patreon or paypal in particular because financially supporting me doing this is a really bad idea because then i just do more of it and who wants that uh, also be links in there for the usual suspects, open invert forum, github where you can download all of my quality designs and make them yourself without giving me any money. That's that no 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 that's a bad idea. I have to stop doing that. Um also uh links in the description to JLC PCB and PCBUA who will take those design files and make boards for you without giving me any money. No, no, oh I'm a real idiot. Okay. So what are links in the description should you not check out? Um, I don't know. I'll think of some and put them in there. So maybe, I don't know. Funny cat videos. Yes. Be a link in the description to a funny cat vi video. So that's it. And until next time. Happy oil draining. Yeah, that's going to be me.